Hi, Shea Given here. You're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. Today I'm here with none other than Dermot Keeley, my old maths teacher, and one of the League of Ireland's greats. Uh, Dermot, obviously you've uh, enjoyed a very successful managerial career, and uh, as a player as well, very successful career. But uh, what would be your favourite achievement as A, manager, and B, a player? I don't know. I was very lucky in... Uh for someone I've, I haven't got great ability and work I deserve to work uh, and I've been I was around good managers I think probably playing with the well with Shamrock Rovers for a row and the Dundalk the double team in Dundalk uh, so Rovers is manager as a player and then I managed the fourth one but uh, Dundalk too I think I, I, I was privileged to play with probably the two, two of the, uh, maybe the greatest size in League of Ireland. Now it's very hard to judge across years, but uh, I was privileged to be able to do that. So, I, you know, I think playing with those two sides, for someone of my limited ability, I think, was, uh, was a, it's absolutely amazing when, as you look back now. Okay, and it went, when, um, in your career, who, who would you say would be the best player that you would have played with? Again, I've always had, I think, you know, when you're starting off football, you're only a kid, you, you learn, you know, and then as you get on, you get on. You, so I think there's, there's people starting off with me, to look O'Connor was unbelievable. Then, you know, I just, you get a bit older yourself, you, you, you're able to see. But I, I think to, to play with, um, I've always said Pat Bourne was absolutely unique footballer. Came back here, it was unbelievable when he came back with that Joe McGrath's team. And my best mate now, who sadly passed away a couple of years ago, Tommy McCowell, I think they would be the two outstanding talents. Uh, maybe not, yeah, the two most outstanding talent that, that I had a pleasure to play with. They were phenomenal, the two of them. Each, each different in their own way, but each uh, above the league, I think. They played They played in the league that was, Pat came, had come back, Tommy never went away. But both of them were uh, playing in the league that they were superior to. Okay, and it, it, in terms of your managerial career, who would have been the best player that you managed? Or who was the, who was the I'd say who was the easiest to manage uh, and uh, your favourite player that you, you would have Well, played? I think the f for me, there's, I, uh, for all the players I signed, I didn't sign a lot of, a lot of really kind of stellar names, but I signed Owen Harry back from home front. What a player. With for Shabu. And I, you know, I, I've always said that um, people were signing players with checkbooks, so he signed down with a postal order. And he came in, a, a raw kid, and he was, he just was phenomenal. He got better and better and better and better. I mean, pound for pound, uh, there, there has been a player like him in League of Ireland. I mean, it's, I subsequently made it up to him. I think he has a, a kitchen now called the Keeley Kitchen designated. Uh, to me because I gave him a few quid eventually it took me about four years before I ever gave him any money <laughs> he played for buttons I gave money to everybody by it because I could I suppose bully him and he played for whatever I gave him eventually and now he got his own like when I was leaving Shad, I, I, I made sure he got a good deal but he was fantastic I, I, I think uh, as a single player I don't think you could have signed a better player that's it. For him to last so long and now go into management and everything else, he, he, he was super, super attitude. Fantastic. He's come full circle and now he's back at Shells now as well, managing. Yeah, I mean, I know his managerial career hasn't been as I thought he would be, you know, as successful as, as I thought it would be. But Shells a difficult ta ta job at the minute. Um, the money is money is tight, and they're they're trying to sort out this move to daily month, and all these things are going on that, that affect the job as a manager. So, I mean, you would hope in a year or two that they'll get everything sorted and you, they'll get back to what they were. Uh, hope and hopefully, uh, I mean, I love Shads, I love John Casey. They're, he's done a fact. He's just kept that club alive. It should be gone at this stage, like, but he's they fought and fought and fought to keep it alive, and hopefully. It may be this year they get promotion, get back in the Premier Division. With a bit of luck, I have another team this year. Yeah, yeah. I had a great time, Chance. I, 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 I loved them. Like you know, I, 
very, very, you know, managed to smash inside the, the double side into two tails and then, then um, went back later on when they, when they were <laughs> we saw the team of five days to play in the, in, in the first division. I actually have a question about that. We got to it later on. Oh, okay. So. Um, who, were, who was your, your toughest battle as a manager? If you had one at all. No, I don't mean scrapping, I just mean... Fat Allen. Okay, Fat Allen. Pat, Ol- Pat Allen and me, we were... We're going head to head like, with, with Pat and Chance at that stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it was when managers weren't politically correct. You, you, you said what you thought. He said what he thought and I thought. So. And we didn't like one another. And it was obvious. And Is that just down to rivalry? No, we just didn't like one another. I didn't okay. like him, he didn't like me. Probably rivalry. Probably just our personalities. I don't know. He was a big personality. I was a big personality. But I mean, Fair subsequently now, I mean, as we get older, we are mellow, and you look back and you go, "What was I fighting with him over exactly?" And you don't know. But what you're doing is you're in your corner fighting. He's in his corner fighting. And although you have, oh, but it's kind of a dislike for one another. But there's a there's a mutual respect there. I have said that now we meet now uh, you know at, at functions every now and then and you know it's grand we're, we're look back and laugh I was exactly you sit back and you laugh and you won't know really why you took it on so seriously but at the time it's the most important thing in the world now you're looking back and you know you're going well really I would think that's what's wrong with the game these days everyone's all pally pally now you say you miss that good old fashioned rivalry or I do anyway I loved it I, then I had a, a spell with, with Roddy Roddy Collins, it was the same. Now, it was a bit different with, with Roddy because he was a bit of an empty head. There wasn't much of a challenge there with Pat. There was, you kind of, a, you felt that you were competing with equals. Like Roddy was a bit too easy. It was like putting down your kids in class. It was a bit too, didn't take much part of the control. It was like, you know. But, uh, but there was, there was that, always that, that reference, Demi used to be my maths teacher, if anyone didn't know. So we won't to, we won't to worry about the maths. Part time maths teacher, I think I was on the phone more times doing, <laughs> doing the team than I was teaching. But uh, there were good times. Do you remember the time when you nearly uh, got me expelled? No. Throwing eggs off the roof. Well, no. It was a uh, rag day. Rag day. Throwing uh, me and a, a two two or three of the other lads <laughs> try uh, throwing eggs off the top of the roof. At, uh, I think first years. <laughs> And uh, we, I think yourself and uh, Brian, the caretaker, found us, and uh, we had, we got two ladders to get actually up on the roof. But uh, it was a nightmare getting back down, and we didn't want to come back down because we knew what we were in for. <laughs> Lucky enough, I think you you, you 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 were a bit easier on us. It was like two days before the leaving, sir. So I we actually got away with it. I think don't that try that at school, kids. I <laughs> yeah. I know we was there. You know, things happen stage that that, that 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 was going on all the time and I'm sure it wasn't even close to looking for you to be suspended uh, to be expelled or suspended probably suspended for a day or something but uh, come here I think that's what happened I was trying to avoid me dad for a day <laughs> yeah I just I, come here it would be just to show everybody you can't deal with like but come here oh, when I was in school the same thing we crawled into the roof space and went all the classes and we were shouting abuse into one of the lady teachers who was in school. So, you know, you do this yourself. And then, as you get older, then your gamekeeper to a poacher, a poacher to a gamekeeper, sorry. And yet, you then, you, you now have to say, well, you're not allowed to do that. But really, deep down, you go, what did you? So, last day of school, what are you going to do? Boys will be boys. Yeah, boys will be boys. There's never any harm comes up. Like yeah, yeah. So, Pat, the older, anyway, you, 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 you... I think definitely, yeah. Okay. Um, now, as you had mentioned uh, previously, there was a about shells. There's a question here. Uh, John Paul McGurin says, "Would love to know Dermot's thoughts about returning to shells only days before the new season and having no players." Now I remember this because we were actually you were teaching us at the time, and I remember you were in and out the door. You'd sit down to tell us something, and your phone would ring, and you were out the door. So I remember, I remember watching how. And I was a big Shells fan at the time as well. Um, so I remember how difficult it was for, for you, seeing you in and out stressing. So to get the actual story now, ten years on. I, when I comes out of football, they came and asked me. Now, I, I no desire to go back. And then you look at them and they, they, they know, they know players. Everything was gone. Um, I met Joe Casey then for the first time, and I just, I was just bowled over by his honesty his 
love for the club and I know he's got abuse since over trying to move and everything else. everything he's done has been for the good of Shells and, and to this day I would still ring him and talk to him I've only talked to him two days ago I, I see I, I see him now as a friend so what I did at that stage was well, I had low I loved Shells when I was there for with the originally uh, unfortunately they, they lost their own themselves with Ali and, and they went bust and you very rarely in, in, in football get a chance to give something back because we're but by the nature of things we're mercenaries we, we, we play for a wage we manage for a wage it's, it's we do this football we love it well I did I love football I love the League of Ireland but I got well paid for it and that was a case then of being able to give something back really for back into football because you, you were trying to keep the club alive yeah so what, what was it like um, getting out, getting the players together because obviously you had five days to do it like how many was that? I, I don't know if I'm watching but you were on the other end of the calls or making the calls not me so um, it was quite manic I suppose well, there was two or three of us running around and I mean I was going home sitting outside people's stores <laughs> kind of kidnapping them in the cards and forcing them to sign their name. You know, you were going, people had signed, everybody had signed, you were, you were looking for people like that, which was, it was just a matter of survival, it wasn't the idea of, it's the first time I was signing people without the idea of winning a league or winning something, because that was always your ambition. This was, was just pure, just so that Keep the club just alive. To club it, just to keep it alive. It really didn't matter where we finished. As it happened that year we finished, we, we, we done really, really well with, with a bunch of fellas that we had in. They were, they were fantastic. Great. Well, sometimes it happens. For all people's talent, all the good players, you get a bunch of blokes in. And all we had, we had to have a bit of crack. You know, we, we got a good bond going, we got everything, everything was right. They gave their all every week, and that was all we do. I mean, we done. We finished comfortably. Uh, I think uh, again, my memory is not not great, but uh, I think we finished fourth or fifth. We were really comfortable mm. in that league for, for, for what happened. And uh, but as I said, it, it was it was nice to be able to do something. Now I know was getting paid, but we weren't getting paid an awful lot of money. I have to say, but it was nice to be able to do something good. Or give back, you know, give something back to, to 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 a club that was very good to me uh, when we won the double. I mean, a lot of fans would probably look at you as a savior there for the club, and you probably wouldn't nah. take it as that. But a lot, I'd say, a lot of fans would would look at you upon that anyway. I don't. Yeah, look, uh, a lot of people say a lot of things about me, so I don't care really. So sometimes they're very nice, sometimes they're not very nice. So when people are talking their opinion, whatever it was. I, I met Joe Casey and Joe Casey was the key for me. Uh, just his honesty, his integrity, just as a man. And I have to say nothing's ever changed. And I, I, I feel sorry sometimes when I, when I, especially last year when you know we were born in flags and I, I feel sorry for Joe um, because I, I think that without him, Shabo would be gone. Would be, would, would be, yeah, he'd be gone. And now I think he'd have got a chance now to look to look forward to a new stadium to build a new fans to build a new relationships and uh, I hope people give me a chance I hope people come back out and support you guys it's, they're sadly missed it's, it's yeah. good to have them like I mean I lived in Sadri I mean I, I, I support the drums so I was in Talca all my life you know, so it's sad to see it gone but you know I, I think the future is good if, if, if people get the people in charge of chance yeah, I had some great days as a, as definitely as a teenager and, and a kid. Um, support shares, obviously Talca, and especially back then they were doing unbelievably well. Sure, the great side. I mean, the, when I left and packed and they took over, yeah. they only threw money at it. Uh, you know, Ollie actually took me in to do work experience actually before there, and uh, uh, Mick Neville was there behind the scenes as well. He took me out to a couple of games as well. Yeah. They gave me all the. All the gear, Jason Bourne's jersey and all the uh, Joseph and Doe, Stuart Bourne, came all their other. Mick Neville, Stuart Bourne, they're all good people. I mean, the, the game, Pathan had a real good side and, and a real good bunch of fellas. Um, unfortunately, Ali was the best thing in the world and he was also the worst thing in the world. So, you know, um, 
those that are around remember the glory days is brilliant but now people that young people coming up looking at shells now don't they don't have that to hang on to and John Casey said to me 10 years ago and he said that subsequently he said damn it I'll push the boat out for you but I'll always have a tie to the shore and that's the account of him and Ali lost the track lost that that you can throw money and throw money and throw money, but what's in this league it has to be very, very careful. And don't Dark will find out now, Cork will find out that along with his wealth, the riches that come, also comes the risk that you overstretch mm. and that you put your club at risk. And Joe Casey swore he'd never do that. And the fairness, too, we had right good rails over budgets, but he gave you as much as he could, but the club was always the first. And that's, that's his job. I used to say to him, my job is to come in and get as much money out of you as I can get. And I, I say to him, and your job is to give me as little as you can but to make you successful. And we just laughed and we, we would still have this thing. And that to me was, is a perfect chairman. He, he gave you everything he could but never, never risked the club. Yeah. And, you know, I think that's, he's, he's, that's so much there to be, to be grateful for. All right, well, John Paul, I hope you're happy with that. That's a fairly subsequent answer. Um, Donald, Han- Donald Handen, sorry, asks, who was the most difficult player to manage? <laughs> I do a few. Uh, Tony Sheridan. Not difficult, just wayward. But uh, I'd say Richie Ford, without a doubt. He was an absolute raven lunatic. Loveliest fella. I've ever met. I know in our city boys, I always, I always like to have one or two around the team that there's a bit of, bit of shit about them. Like they, 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 uh, they're rather tough and they, they mean. But fuck me, they're hard to manage. He was. In, in what way was he hard? Ah, uh, he just, <laughs> he's, he was, he was mad. He would. We were going around doing schools and. We're starting this full time thing going around, they were all going into schools. He was the best to send round to a school. I don't think he ever went to school. I say broke into schools, man. Probably put the copper <laughs> off the roof, I say, man. Like, but he was fantastic with kids. He was brilliant. He loved going around. You could send him any, anything, day or night, if he wanted something done, Richie do it. See, coming in, training in the morning. He'd have been out having a few points. He'd come in, he'd be running around kicking people, batting the fellas off the fence. I had to send him in. Oh, he was an absolute disaster. Just bull. See me get him on that park for 90 minutes. He was absolutely brilliant. He gave you every single thing. But no discipline. None whatsoever. He then went and managed. Even as Cavadonian does it. I mean, just, I, I laughed today after that. I just go, well, you deserve it, really. This is, this is karma. I'll go and manage a team and have some fella coming in on a Monday morning, having been out the weekend when he shouldn't have been out, and just try to run off. I, I'm just mad. He was absolutely stone mad. But the nicest, nicest young fella I've ever met in my life. Could do, would do anything for you. But see, trying to control him on the pitch? <laughs> no. You could take him off, he'd be going around kicking people, he'd be going in with something in his head, he'd come in with his head not on, and he'd be battering centre, battering fellas, and you take him off just because you're going to, he ought to get sent off. And he'd go back next week and he wouldn't learn, he'd just go and do the same thing again. You couldn't punish him. You'd take him off, and he just go back and do the same thing next thing. I, I look a bit like like James McLean now. He does mad stuff. And he gets taken off and then he, he doesn't get in the team for two weeks. But the minute he comes back in the team, the first thing he does is goes and battles somebody again. Yeah, like yeah. There's no click off. There, there's nothing that says, hold on, I, if I do this again, I'm going to get taken off. They don't. They just, they just are. I love James McLean as well. They just, they are what they are. So you can take them off drop them, find them, do whatever you like, but once you put them back in the team, he just goes back in the set. He doesn't say, well, hold on now, I've just been fine two weeks wages, I'll take me time. 
I won't do it. He just goes, I've just been fined two weeks' wages. Boom! Back at somebody and go, what's that? What can I what, do? What did I do wrong? Yeah, so I loved him. I absolutely loved him. But I had him only in that sense. Not, not, yeah. not a bad bloke. But probably unmanageable, I would say. Probably unmanageable. You know, it was who then? Who came in when I was just there as well, but but nutty really. He grew on the nutty, but just started laughing. The exact opposite. You know, we lay for a bus. He banged them in the store. He was right the next time. He yeah. set something on the pitch. He took him up. You done something. You said, don't do that again. You don't do that again. See, Richie? <laughs> just. <laughs> just come on Richie if you're having a good day with Richie and his head is on it's going to be brilliant see his head's astray he wants to battle the centre half he's got to battle the centre half so you're just sitting there and you're going what can you do <coughs> but um, I loved him I loved him and the kids loved him I just such a lovely lovely one deep down inside but just when he got on the football pitch something happened no, and I have to say, because I was similar, a school teacher, refined and that, but when I went on the park, park there was something changed, there's a, there a different person there, and Richie was... Is that same. what made you like a model? Yeah, yeah, I love them, I love all these types, yeah. types because I probably am that type yeah, of yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember and the McGill got rest of soul coming to me in the dark and saying, well, you know, you're going to have to start paying your own fines. And I say, why? Because you know, you get fined every week. And I said, yeah, because I tackle people. That's my job. And then I, I remember saying to them, well, you take my wages and I don't play. And then remember McLaughlin tried to manage me. And I only look now back and you're going, how did someone manage me? Because I, I, slagging now, Richie and some more, Tony Sheridan and <laughs> these people. And you're going, but I was the exact same. I was unmanageable. But McLaughlin couldn't manage me. Yeah, yeah. But with age comes wisdom, I suppose. I would never say that. No? No, I wouldn't think of any ways I think. But God, I, I would say if the same thing arose today, I would do the exact same thing. I don't think... I'm Richie. I'm Cheryl. I'm, I never learned. Uh, Pat Nolan asks, Ask Dermot about Cipolletti and the League of Ireland game in South America. Poor winger. Never recovers. That's all about we, the year after uh, Argentina won the World Cup, there was a league trip, the League of Ireland trip out, and there was Dundalk players were picked. Nine, nine of us, and a big crew of Lindley Crowns as well, Pat Nolan, and there's Kennedy and Johnny Walsh, good crack. And we played at a place called, I call it Kipeletti. We played on a Tuesday, it was draw, and Louis, in his wisdom, so we were playing on a Thursday. Now the first match had been rough. It was like playing at Tullamore. Like it was middle of nowhere, and uh, we played towards him. And there was some bad blows for the previous match. And they had a winger, and he was going around kicking lumps out of everybody. So uh, I think it was brown at half time, and I was having no, no more of this now. Uh, and as I've been talking about being mad, learning, never did. So it was on about 10 minutes, and there was one of those, my favourite ones. He's coming that way, and I'm going across this way. There's only going to be one winner, I'm going to batter him. And I absolutely, I call him, I mill them. I absolutely, I mean, it was, it was like a truck meeting a little mini. And he was on the ground a bit and there was blood running down his leg. I seen Leo bust his um, sack, ball bag. <laughs> and as the referee runs over to send me off, I'm running down the pitch. He's running after me to give me the red card. The man has been carted off and John Minnock is jumping up and down going, count them, you bastard, count them. And I'm just chewing and as I'm running down, they're all throwing bottles. And the lads come in, I think, they were 25 minutes, could be 20 minutes left. And the boys just came in and they were showered with everything. And they just walked in to my man and said, thanks for that there. <laughs> so <laughs> I've been sent off. So you say like Richie and I was the same. I, I just, there, there would have been no... I would have joked, no, no, I would have went out with that in my head, knowing that I'm going to bathroom and I'm going to get sent off. Now, I didn't obviously know what, how serious it was. So I don't know whether he had children or anything after that. So. 
Det er sådan en Philip Larsen på det. Shit happens. Lewis Shaw asked, um, what do you think of the new League of Orleans structure? No, no, I guess all of a sudden come in again this year. No, I know. No one knows about it. Uh, I believe in a one. I don't believe there's there's uh, room for two leagues. I find two. I don't believe that. The fourth division is an absolute disaster. I mean, an absolute disaster. I think people should run the league properly. There seems like there that shouldn't be in a big league. You just make decisions. At long Longford one or the other. You know, you go all the way around the country. I think we've enough for a 14, 16 team league. I think it's big enough to support that. I also think that it would spread the few good around. I mean, if Dundalk visit or Cork visit or Rovers visit, I think money goes to clubs. I think it can improve. Uh, that's my view. It always has been my view. I, 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 I just don't believe there's, there's room for a two-tier league in this. Uh, Do you, would you rather see them all in one? Yeah, all in one. And I think some will suffer. So you have to make the decision yeah, yeah, yeah. that so and so is not going yeah, to be yeah, in this league. Yeah. But I also then believe in a regional league whereby you you get four regional winners or four runners up or whatever you want to do and play off the, each of the, uh, uh, the Premier Division. And if your pitch and everything else is in shape, well then you know you come up and you get promoted and you get relegated. It would take a bit of time, I think, but it, would, it might foster football in the likes of Kerry, you know, um, Mayo, with that, where, where, where there's no league mm. set up at the minute. Um, I think they're working on towards a Mayo. They are, the moment. yeah. I, 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 I think a way of doing that is 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 to promote, I, I believe, one league. I, I, uh, I might be wrong. I mean, I, I bet people would, would say that this is the correct way to go at the, at the minute. I don't. I, I don't believe, and I believe it was put in the last minute, probably because we well, got promotion, whatever. So, no. uh, um, no. I don't think that I don't think the league is looked after. I don't think it's approved at any great sense since I was playing. Okay. Um, what do you think of the Chicago consortium taking over to the Peaky Blinders? Peaky Six, is it? Peaky Six, yeah. Um, or Peak Six. I. As much as I admire Joe Casey, Andy Connolly, Paul Brown, the two owners of Dundalk, say to club again, come in, put the money in my pocket, and I've been doing it for, for years. I've got unbelievable, for, we're unbelievably fortunate with getting Stephen Kenny and winning the league and getting going in Europe and all that. So he had a kind of similar job to you then, with, with, with Stephen. Yeah, Stephen with, with yeah done, but done, a, done a much better job than I did in fairness. Now, got them. I think second the first year and then one of the next year they've been fantastic and it's a great town for football I mean they love football and um, I think the fear of people is that you know we had this before with Cork and that they come in and, and they don't um, invest they don't invest yeah Dundalk they, they pull a new pitch the boys have been fantastic but the club that pitch or that ground it has to be the worst ground in Ireland. And if I was in a way support, I wouldn't go to Dundalk because you're shoved in the side of the stand, no toilets, no facilities at all. So it needs a huge amount of money. Now, you either get that from the government or you get an investor. And I think, I hope, uh, I know the boys are still going to be in not in charge so they sold the club but they're going to be around the club they're going they're going i think they'll be there to guide people on i hope that the people who are taking over um have the goodwill of uh, dundalk at heart uh, it's, i mean i had never understood why people didn't invest in the league of ireland because if you try to get into europe with an english side it's impossible but you can get you can you can get into europe every year in Ireland, if you went to the back end, yeah, you've only got to get for a second or two, or for a second. With, with money, you should be able to do that every year, and you'll get a return on your investment. So, to me, for an investor, it's a no-brainer. But I do hope that we don't lose the sense of the dark. I, I, I now I've lived up there for the last twelve years. I love the town. I love the idea. 
when you walk through the dock, you don't see Liverpool jerseys. You don't see well, you do Liverpool, uh, United, all those. You really see four out of five I don't dock jerseys, and that that's very. I don't think it's going to tell me that because in Cork you've got Gaelic, and you know you've got the soccer and Gaelic. Well, anywhere else you've got the same thing, but the dock you've only got soccer. Yeah. There's no the use of Gaelic. To me. I'd love to be able to say it's a power level, but I don't. I'm in the fourth position. I can spot the dark in the league and dubs in the Gaelic, so it's grand. Yeah. <laughs> the accent suits them. I think I can do that. I don't have to support level, thank God. All right. Um, a couple of people had, had asked um, why did you feel the fans that attended that Liverpool versus Rovers game were more on? I think you, you, you knew this question was coming. Yeah, because. Uh, I said on television, I haven't been back on television since, so obviously it didn't go down too well. But uh, I don't have a problem with um, people supporting Liverpool or Manchester United or Everton or whoever. Yeah. No problem. Once they support League of Ireland. Joe Casey, again, from Shelburne, is a Leeds United season ticket holder. Andy Connolly from Dundalk is an Aston Villa supporter has a season ticket, has a box, I think, in in uh, Aston Villa. And that, that's, I, I don't have any problem that because they put the, the money, they put the focus into the League of Ireland. But what we had that night was uh, a Liverpool reserve team Yeah. with the only p- person that anybody knew was Brad Jones, the keeper. Jones, the goalkeeper, who uh, had... Was he I had him on loan in Shells and threw him out because he's the only goalkeeper I ever got on loan, let in six goals. He was poison. Seriously, he was the worst goalkeeper I'd ever seen. He'd be better off with no hands. So the only guy, he was captain. The only reason he was captain because he was the only one that knew the other players on the team. And what I said was, it was 46,000 people paid money in to watch Liverpool reserves. Not even a second string. It would have been second or third string. They wouldn't have got they wouldn't have got four hundred and sixty people if it, if I had been playing to Liverpool, and I couldn't understand and I don't understand. What I can understand going to watch Liverpool. Yeah. I can understand going to watch Manchester United. Anybody else? Did I you think there was a bit of a difference because they did come over in the summer just gone and they did and they did have you know start players playing. They've stayed a few. I don't understand this. If they, we we played Liverpool. As a league team, the full team, yeah. packed the old lands down there. That's fine. And I don't blame Rovers for doing the match because you, you need to play for that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I can follow all of that. I just, for the life of me, don't understand why I would pay 50 or 60 quid for some kids still in nappies, as far as football is concerned, that I never heard of and probably never will hear of. Maybe one or two are around now, I don't know. Brad thing is all very rare. I, I, I don't follow him, so I don't know. Well, I think he's in Holland now, somewhere. Probably putting his finger in a dike or something, I don't know. Just, I, that, that was why. It frustrates me that we get four teams. But for, for people that we don't know, and that we can't get them the next week, rather than playing in front of 3,000 people. I don't know I can play, I can't play. And I love the league, I just... Last kind of, last question is, um, will you return to management again? And uh, how are you enjoying life in, uh, in Lansbury at the moment? No. I'm loving it. So you stay retired? Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. The illusion mode, yeah. Okay. Yes, you probably retired around the, the right time. Yeah. I, I try, I always said I, I, I never outlive me, me welcome, I never have, so no, I'd rather like to go back. I've been watching it. I'm, I'm a bigger fan than I ever was, but uh, no desire to come back. Mm. And uh, you were saying off air that you're going to be looking at, at uh, starting your own pub, is it? We, a, we just bought a pub. The back of Simon, we're the back on uh, Wednesday. Uh, it's called Keeley's. It's in the old town in Puerto del Carmen. It's small. You have to, it's a good site, but a really small pub. Very Irish. We have all the Irish, all the Irish sports. Bit of gold, I think, all day, and uh, hopefully, people want to come in and shoot the breeze on me. As I said, 
if they think I'm a gentleman, come in and buy a pint and chat with me for an hour and a half. If you think I'm a boss, come in and chat with me for an hour and a half. Would you buy a pint? I don't give a shit. So, grand, I hope to meet loads of people. I mean, it's very, very popular with, with, with Irish people and uh, there's an awful lot of Irish pubs, so it's a tough mark. But we live in a pub. As you said, you remember me saying that, you know. On the, on the beach drinking a Sam Miguel, you used to always say that when, in, yeah. in class that when you were talking. Well, the dream has come true. So from now on, from next week on, we, we start trying to live the dream. No, I've, I've had five months off. Uh, well, not I've been retired longer, but I've been out there for five months looking for a place, but basically having a good time. So it's time now to get the, the back in the pre season training now, get our heads down with. Yeah. See, we make a few quid. Actually, just before the end, I have a very funny story from when uh, you were a teacher. You were teaching me maths, uh, and I, Jonathan Dennis and Gizzy sitting beside me, and uh, Spoon was down the back end of the classroom, yapping, yapping, yapping away. And uh, I can't remember. You, you, you got. You were on like a, a chair with wheels, oh, and it was a chair, yeah. a three wheel chair, yeah. And uh, he wouldn't stop talking, and you went to lean back and throw a marker at him and whatever way you threw I think you caught him with the marker, I'm not sure, but Probably. the chair went from up and yeah, all you've seen is your legs just come up and you on the floor and he bolted out of the room as fast as his legs could carry him. So let me imagine if uh, if a player had a cross to what would have happened to him, but I still, I was only saying, I was actually out with him last week and I, I just remember saying to him that I would mention it to you. So there you are, Sean, I mentioned it. Uh, do you remember it? Yeah. I I, I remember that, but I remember that particular class. You know, really, were, yeah, it was a tough goal. Yeah. I mean, I love teaching, but yeah, that class stretched it. Yeah, we had some gifts in there. <laughs> but I think, in fairness to them, and I remember, I, I think I remember coming in with, with the, the leader saying, I think everybody passed their exam, their, their, their leader said maths. We, and the majority of them have failed. Junior said maths. So for all the work I did on the phone when I was playing football, I obviously spent a little bit of time and enough time to give them. Well, I remember that class, I remember doing right headbangers. But as I said, we're talking about Richie and myself. I love that bit of madness. Yeah. It keeps you sane. It's the whole thing, right? Absolutely. Well, look, uh, thanks very much for coming in on the show. I know you, you're a busy man and you have stuff to attend tonight, so uh, for you to take the time out of the day, it's much appreciated. Uh, I'm sure everyone, even from the League of Ireland group chat, who uh, who put all the questions and all in, um, I picked out the best ones I could anyway. Um, thanks for answering all. Pleasure. And uh, yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And uh, yeah, thanks very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Have a great day.